the second generation iPhone SE. It comes in three colors, black, red, and white. And it only costs $399, yes, $400 for a brand new iPhone. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So right off the bat, I just want to say I'm not keeping all these iPhone SEs for myself. I will be giving probably two away. I'm going to keep one for myself, but I'm probably going to give two away to two of our subscribers. So if you haven't done already, go ahead and subscribe. I'll have more details on how you could win one of these iPhone SEs in a future video shortly to come. But as we always do here with the new iPhone release, we're going to unbox one of these guys and we're going to see what's inside. So you can see the black, the white, and the red iPhone SE second generation. We have our design by Apple in California packet. Let's see what's inside there. Of course, we get a welcome to iPhone guide. So you get the side button details, you get touch ID details, flip it over here, and you get some additional information about the ring silent switch, tips, wireless charging, lightning connector for charging, Etc. You also get a SIM eject tool inside and you get some regulatory slash warranty information. Flip that over for some nice good reading material. And last but not least, we have our Apple stickers. And before you ask, yes, all three iPhones have the same color Apple stickers inside. Now, what is different about the product red iPhone SE is that you get this little product red insert. And that tells you how Apple will contribute a portion of the purchase. Lately though, with the COVID-19, they're actually going to help out with the global support of COVID-19. So that's interesting to know with the product red. Now inside, you also get a five watt power adapter. You get a pair of ear pods and these feature an inline remote control and you get a lightning to USB a cable for charging and for syncing. So let's turn each iPhone over, you get the white, the red, and the black, which is actually going to be my favorite color of the iPhone SE. I just think it looks great. I love the, the sides, how the antenna lines are sort of hidden. Uh, it reminds me of the iPhone 5, which came in that nice black color. Love that iPhone 5. That was one awesome phone. Now on the product red, you will notice a little product red logo at the bottom. That's the only difference externally between these three iPhones. So again, see those colors, red, white, and black. Which one is your favorite color? Which iPhone SE will you pick up? Let me know down below in the comment section, which one's your favorite color and why it is your favorite color. I'm super interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. Now let's talk about some of the top features, starting with price. So even on Apple's marketing page, they acknowledge the fact that, hey, this thing is cheap, relatively speaking, starting at just $399, lots to love, less to spend. Here for the iPhone SE, if we go to Apple's website, you can see if you get the 64 gigabyte version, you only pay $399, cheapest iPhone that Apple sells brand new. Now compare that with the iPhone 11 Pro, Apple's top of the line iPhone. They offer it in a 512 gigabyte version. Forget this. I'm going to show you here in a second. 1449. So do the math on that one. Actually, we're actually going to do the math. So here, 1449 divided by 399. So you know what that means? Yes, indeed. You can purchase three iPhone SEs for less than the price of a single iPhone 11 Pro Max 512 gigabyte version. So that means you still have money to spare for cases or whatever the case may be. Now let's talk about another great feature, familiarity. So the iPhone SE second generation, if you're upgrading from something like an iPhone 6 or even an iPhone 6S or even an iPhone 7, you're gonna know largely what to expect. It's gonna feel very familiar for those people upgrading from those particular devices. Uh, but that's because number one, you have a home button and it's 4.7 inches for the screen size. 
So this thing is going to feel right at home for you, no pun intended there with that solid state home button. You have a seven megapixel FaceTime HD camera, which is a huge upgrade if you're coming from the original iPhone SE, which had a 1.2 megapixel camera. Of course, you have that speaker on the front as well. On the rear, you have your Apple logo, and nothing at the bottom unless you have the product red version you're gonna have the product red text down below up top you have a 12 megapixel wide angle camera again a huge upgrade if you're coming from an older device this is the same camera for the most part that you'll find in the iphone 11. so you also have a microphone and you have that true tone flash right there so on the top nothing there but the aluminum band that wraps all the way around your phone now this is not stainless steel, which is way more durable, but this is aluminum. And you see the two antenna bands. There's actually two on the other side as well. You have your nano SIM tray with the hole for the eject tool. And you also have your side button, which is right here. And this is going to allow you to sleep, wake your phone. Also combine with the home button for screenshots, things of that nature. The other side, you can see the two antenna bands right there and you see your volume buttons up and down and then above those volume buttons you're going to find your ring slash silent switch which is right here all right so let's move on to the bottom of the device now you see your lightning port for charging and syncing and then here on the left side you have your microphone input and then on the opposite side you have your speaker output so that really wraps it up for the features. Externally speaking, of course, you do have that 4.7 inch LCD display on front. So that means this device is easy to operate and hold with a single hand. Now, I just wanted to give a nod to the black version. It is my favorite version of the iPhone SE, especially how those antenna bands are almost hidden there. I think it looks great. The red version is not too bad as well. And actually the white version isn't bad either. I mean, all three of them look great in my opinion, but if I had to pick just one, Hands down, I would pick the black version. It is just so cool, so sleek, so stealth. But also notice this, the white version has a black housing on front. So all three devices have the black housing on front, no white housing to be found. I personally love that two-tone look. So you get three gigabytes of RAM with the iPhone SE second generation, which is one gigabyte less than you get with the iPhone 11 lineup. But three gigs of RAM on a $399 iPhone is still pretty good and that's going to show benefits when doing things like browsing Safari. You're not going to have all your Safari tabs refreshing so often and also when resuming applications and when running more professional apps like LumaFusion video editing for instance. Now what's extremely impressive about the iPhone SE is that it features the A13 system on a chip. This is the same chip in the flagship $1,449 phone that we just referenced earlier. Same chip that you're gonna find in that phone is in the $400 iPhone SE. And you can see the Geekbench scores speak for themselves. Single core and multi-core performance is very similar. Remember that the iPhone SE has one gig less of RAM, so that's gonna have a little bit of an effect on the Geekbench scores. But performance wise, it is virtually the same. Games like Impossible Road that would normally put a first generation iPhone SE or an iPhone 6 or 6S in a very awkward situation performance wise runs like butter here on the iPhone SE second generation. Even games like Hot Lava for instance runs very well here on the iPhone SE second generation. And one of my favorite games here, Crossy Road Castle. If you haven't checked this out, you definitely owe it to yourself to check it out. It's an awesome game but that runs great. But here's the thing that really impresses me, the way LumaFusion performs on here. Now, LumaFusion is my favorite, probably one of my favorite professional apps on the iPad. It runs here on the iPhone SE like butter. I mean, we're talking about real-time video editing, and we're not just talking about basic cuts and transitions, no, we're talking about keyframing, we're talking about adding effects directly to clips, adding things like blur directly to clips, adding the LUTs even, changing the blur right there on the fly, playing back, no rendering, double tapping, viewing full screen. I mean, this application is downright amazing and it runs so smooth on the second generation SE. Now with the rear camera, you get a 12 megapixel shooter with an f1.8 aperture. 
And although from a feature perspective, it's not exactly the same as the iPhone 11, it is close. You can take super detailed pictures with barely any effort. And part of that reason is thanks to Smart HDR, which takes multiple photos at different exposures in a split second and then composites all those exposures into a single photo to make it look great. So it's not just about raw megapixels, but it's also the software powering the camera as well. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone SE original model, you know that front facing camera was horrible. 1.2 megapixels, it looked like, well, it just looked like this. It wasn't good at all. But the iPhone SE second generation does a whole lot better job. You get the true tone flash. I mean, that's still a terrible photo just composition wise, but lots more detail there. Now the iPhone SE second generation also brings to you portrait mode. Unfortunately, it only works with people. So keep that in mind if you're using the stock camera app. But it's cool though to have portrait mode here on a $400 iPhone. You see it there, you go into the edit mode. And there in post, you can change all the different portrait lighting effects and switch them on the fly. That is really awesome. You can also change the intensity of those portrait lighting effects as well. You can also go in and change the aperture, which allows you to dynamically change the depth of field in post. That is so cool because normally you couldn't do this with a, a standalone camera. This is using software to simulate the bokeh that you normally get on a fast lens with a narrow focal length. But here you can do it all in software and that's one of the major advantages of smartphone photography. All the computational work you can do thanks to the image signal processor there on the A13 system on a chip. But here's a little side note, a little side tip for you guys. There's an app called Halide you can get from the app store that allows you to use portrait mode with inanimate objects and animals as well. So you can go in there, you can see portrait mode is enabled. So now you go into that photo in the stock photos app and there you can change studio lighting, all your portrait lighting effects and your aperture as well. So that's kind of cool to know. All right, so 4K video was one of the coolest features about the original iPhone SE. It shot 4K video, 30 frames per second. Such an awesome feature to have in a smartphone the size of the original iPhone SE. But the second generation iPhone SE ups the ante a little bit here. You get 4K at 60 frames per second and also you get a cinematic 4K at 24 frames per second. In addition, the iPhone SE 2 supports H.265 encoding. So that's going to give you smaller file sizes for all your high quality video when compared to the original iPhone SE. So you can see the iPhone SE supports 4K at 30 frames per second. There is no 60 or 24 frames per second support and file sizes are going to be larger comparatively. So here is the iPhone SE second generation 4K video. I've slowed down that 60 frames per second to 50%, which gives you that really nice smooth footage. And it works great when shooting handheld with the iPhone SE 2. So if you don't have any sort of stabilization, slowing down your footage in post is going to make it look a lot smoother. So another benefit of 4K videos, you can punch in if you're framing in 1080p, you can punch in and really get a lot of that detail. So here we are again, 4K 60 frames per second, slowed down to 50%. The iPhone SE second generation really is a beast of a phone from a photography and videography perspective. And that continues to be true with slow motion. So here you can go in and record slow mo at 240 frames per second at 1080p. Now on the old iPhone SE, you can only record slow mo at 240 frames per second when shooting at 720p. So less resolution, but here is the iPhone SE. 1080p, 240 frames per second. Since I have this video in a 24 frame timeline, slowed it down to 10% and it looks great. Now, if you're coming from an older device, you may be interested to know about quick take video. This is a way to take video while in photo mode on the fly. So say you're taking a photo, but then you think, hey, this will be a good video. All you do is tap and hold on the shutter and that starts a video. You could slide over to the right to lock it into place. So again, slide over to the right, let's lock it into place. The video continues without you having to hold it down. And you can take photos while in that video if you want to. But what about burst mode? Well, all you do is slide over to the left like that to activate burst mode.
really cool. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone SE or an iPhone 6 or 6S, then wireless charging is going to be a brand new feature for you. And it's such a nice, convenient feature to have. Now, obviously the iPhone 8 had wireless charging and that's what the iPhone SE is based off of. So it's not a new feature, so to speak, in that regard. But if you're coming from an older device, yeah, you're going to definitely want a wireless charger. Now, another great thing about the iPhone SE is storage capacity. You get 64 gigabytes in the base model. You can upgrade to 128 gigabytes for $50 more. And for $150 more, you can go up to 256 gigabytes. But in my opinion, the sweet spot really is 128 gigabytes if you know you're going to need that extra storage. But for a lot of people, 64 gigabytes is going to do the job just fine. And the iPhone SE second generation is water resistant. So it's IP67 certified. That means it can go up to a depth of one meter for up to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna drop it in this bucket here that I used to wash my car. Obviously that's not gonna be a meter and we're not gonna keep it underwater for 30 minutes, but it's nice in case you have an accident to have that protection. You certainly wouldn't want to do this with the original iPhone SE. So it's just nice to have that, even though I don't recommend intentionally dunking your iPhone underneath water. It is nice to know that just in case you should be good. And last but not least, we have Touch ID. Now, Touch ID obviously isn't new. This was available on the original iPhone SE as well. In the newer iPhones, Touch ID has, of course, been replaced by Face ID, Face Unlock. But in this budget phone, Touch ID is back along with the solid state home button. There is no true depth camera or anything like that. Uh, so this allows you to unlock your phone using your fingerprint, which is totally fine in my opinion. It's actually kind of nice to have that fingerprint unlock available here on the iPhone SE second generation. And although I do prefer Face ID unlock, I find that Touch ID is super fast and still extremely convenient for unlocking your phone. Uh, for authorizing purchases. It's just a solid proven piece of technology that just works. And one of the cool things about Touch ID is that if you're wearing a mask because of the coronavirus, you can still unlock your phone with ease without that mask interfering. And you can invoke Touch ID directly from your pocket while your, your phone is still in your pocket. So you can start the unlock process before you even pull your phone fully out of the pocket. So let me show you again, it's locked right now. I'm going to authenticate with Touch ID while it's still in my pocket, pull it out and it's unlocked and ready to go. So that is another really cool benefit that I've always appreciated about Touch ID. So ladies and gentlemen, the original iPhone SE, as I've talked about before, was a legendary device. And the iPhone SE second generation, while not quite as legendary, has a whole lot to offer. It features the flagship A13 that is in devices three times plus the iPhone SE second generation's asking price. So that in and of itself makes this device worth considering. If you're coming from an older device, definitely check out the iPhone SE. It's that good. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.